fuck. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. <laughs> It's the same everywhere I go Every time I look cheap It's all a bunch of offended up type pussies Society wears your balls Political correctness then turns you soft It's like you can't even tell a joke These damn days it's like a good joke Some floppy dildo you pussies can't take Just get ready okay The shit talking cunts don't give a fuck What your gender or race, gender or race. So bitch you're pissed off of what Use a pussy and list the shit talking cunts on so bitch, you're pissed off with what? Cause he's a pussy and this the shit talking cunts on. Grow some ball! For shit talking cunts podcast. With your host, Irish Odeo. And overtime often. Sit back, spark up, and enjoy. What's up, you bad motherfuckers? It's time for the Shit Talking Cunts podcast. We're fucking impromptu in Boston. It's your boy Irish O'Neill, clean shaven and braven. And, you know, you know, we got our boy OTO here. We're fucking chilling. Welcome to my home. House, kitchen. Welcome to my humble abode. It's, uh, it's going to be a pretty chill episode. I mean, like ripping the volcano we maybe got, we it got, might it might it might not be we got uh we got craig ferguson on in the background for the uh what, what was the word v-base vibras vibras craig ferguson is my favorite late night show talk show host ever mm -hmm. so i mean he, he's, you know, he's, i get a lot of my he had, a, he had a lot of good bits and uh i really i dude i always like the uh he had that one thing where it was like the skeleton oh he's there he's just talking to me right now no, oh. no, no. He's talking to like whatever that. No, is. no, no. That well, yeah. That just no, throwback. That 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 character was always so funny. Like the shit he would say to like celebrities and stuff. Like it was always funny when they'd like shit on celebrities and stuff via a character like that. And fucking everything up. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we got a, we got enough slack. We're good. Fucking, we get that. We got that volcano fucking pumping, boys. You know what it is. Um, Are we? Dude, can I tell you what new show I'm fucking obsessed with now? Oh, uh, this, this is your this... cup. Sorry. Oh, thanks. This is the only, uh, this is mine. Wait, how is this my water? Did you just give me a minuscule amount of water? I've, I haven't drank any water out of this. I haven't drank any water out of that, no. Oh, you just, pour... <laughs> you said, do you want water? Bro, the price of gas has gone up and water. <laughs> it's crazy out here. The, the fucking, uh, uh, Putin's fucking everything up. Joey's scared the world's going to go up and blow up and shits. I'm well, telling we, him to we calm all down. We for Bitcoin. It was a Russian scam. Yo, what's up with crypto? I was watching, um. You see that Dan Pena thing where he's like. No, I was watching UFC. <laughs> Seeing oh. crypto everywhere. Oh, you're talking about fucking uh, just promoting Piotr it Jan getting fucking his ass robbed. Handed to him. I thought he was robbed. Nah, dude, Aljo didn't do anything on the ground. He just fucking laid on him. Nah, Aljo won what? Two out of five. One round was a draw. I I would say Aljo won two three, Jan won four five, and then one is kind of like gray area. Mm -hmm. One is gray area, but it was a good night though. Yeah, I it, the main event was trash. It it this is the only reason that that I Aljo makes me not like him because because he's black, dude. You just let <laughs> me say it. I'm really having a moment here. He's black. No, it's uh because you can't say the n word when you watch him fight because <laughs> he fuck you up. Yeah, but Piotr Jan makes me feel like I can, man. Uh, no, it's just he he acted like such a little like pussy cornball after the whole like uh winning by disqualification thing the first time he fought Piotr Jan that mm -hmm. was like like look hey I get it like it's it's easier to be like oh yeah so anyways yeah you know basically I thought he acted like a fucking clown I don't know if it saved any of that first part we're just gonna keep rolling if it didn't but yeah uh I don't know Aljo Aljo's kind of a cornball but I guess they resolved it now um and you missed my joke about how you want to say the n-word but you can't because he'll fucking fuck you up so I don't know um, apparently all I gotta do is knee him in the head and he's he's done so um nah the the night was cool um uh, I thought the um everything was pretty cool except I saw Mickey Gall get his ass kicked yeah by uh the, the some guy's first time Mickey Gall's like getting up there though. I mean, he's he's a good fighter, but he's like you know, I mean, he's just getting older. And I know, I just, but like, you know, I have after my faith. 
I feel like his peak was beating the shit out of uh, what's his face, uh, CM Punk. What does CM stand for? Chicago made. Chicago made punk. <laughs> That's a fucking stupid name. Yeah, I mean, I guess it'd be cool if you was like in a band or some shit, but yeah, if that was the name of your band, but it's the name of a wrestler, it's cool, it's alright. Let me tell you the new show that I'm fucking obsessed with. See, only it, it, like, AW Dynamite. No, nah, no, nah, it's oh. nothing to do. This is I'm talking about a man show, a real man show. Fuck you. It's on Netflix. It's called The Ultimatum. <laughs> Have you seen this show, dude? It no. fucking rules. So basically, they bring in like five couples. And in all of the couples, there's like one of them is issuing an ultimatum. Like you, uh, you need to. Is it a reality show? Like a real one? It's not like it's not. It's dude, not I, like I, it's... I, I. Can be honest. Three episodes in, I'm still not a hundred percent convinced. It's not scripted, but I. So I, it's not like that Korean but, show we was watching. Um, what's it called? The game show. No, everybody no, was no, dying. No, this is, it's definitely it's supposed to be like a reality show. Like this is real. It's just there's a couple of things that like seemed a little scripted, but who, but I but I also could just be a nitpicky con. But basically, they bring these five couples in, right? And one of them's basically being like, you know, I'm issuing you an ultimatum. We're gonna go do this thing because you know, like I want to get married, and you're like dragging your feet or yada yada, whatever the reason. Some people want to have kids, the other person doesn't. And what's so fucking funny to me about this show, which by the way. I'm announcing it here if it doesn't get announced before I put this episode out anywhere else. Uh, probably starting next week. I'm definitely going to do a watch along podcast of this because I just love, dude, I got such a sick, pl- like I, I lit up with glee watching this, just giving, giving the relationship feedback that these dummies needed to hear so they didn't go on this dumb show. I mean, problem one is it's like, I mean, half their problems are like one dude's problem was like, oh, he just like, he'd never lived with a girl before. And so, like, he was dragging his feet on that as the reason to not get married. One dude, like, wanted kids and his girl didn't. Other people were just like, I want to get married. And the dude being like, I'm just like, I'm not financially stable enough for that yet. And then, like, women are saying equally goofy shit. Like, one woman was, like, shocked when... So, basically, the way it works, they bring them in and then they go, here's what we're going to do. You're going to spend the next week uh, from this moment forward. All, you know, know, all you all these couples you're all broken up and he goes for the next week you're going to get to know these other like dudes are going to get to know the women women are going to get to know the dudes and at the end of that week you have to pick someone to then live with you for the next three weeks and go through like a fast pace i guess they, they're called i mean i haven't gotten beyond them picking and uh getting like a weekend but like bro I mean, it's, like it's extended speed it's, dating. It, I, I, I could come with how juicy it was of like just watching these fucking nightmare situations where you're just like, this is a simple solution. It's like the dummies where it's like she doesn't want to have kids and he does. It's like, OK, do you not want to have kids? No. He wants to have kids. Yes. Are you going to change your mind on that? No. Then break up. Don't go on the show. Like, is that fucking simple? Is that and, and like. You watch them have to play out this uncomfortability or like the best are the women that like the women that are issuing the ultimatum have the least fun time on this show because then they get in there and their man's like able to fuck it. like one bitch. Like, dude, one bitch like no one was really feeling her. She was just kind of like a little too plasticky looking and stuff like that. And I mean, like one dude straight up was like and he was trying this dude was like he's kind of a dickhead. Uh he's like a salesman dude or whatever he's kind of a dickhead because uh his like just his reasonings that he gives for like being into these women or not being into this women he doesn't really give like a concrete reason so it's like it just comes off like he's bullshitting but he does do like something i would do where he was just straight up not feeling this chick pretty early on and he was just like listen like i'm just i'm not feeling any attraction to you so like sorry and she got all in her feelings about it it was just like he's not a good person and at the end he's like she's like trying to call him out like oh he's having like a moment or something with some other chick and it's just like (laughs) it explained him it's like lady he's like he's like we're here for like a finite amount of time to be making some very big decisions he's like at the end of this we're either getting married to and leaving with the person we came here with we're leaving with someone else that we met here or we're going home alone. And he was just like, he's like, I was trying not to waste your time. He was like, he's like, I guess could I have delivered that nicer? Sure. But like, 
th that's the other thing that happens. Like this, this, this woman's like, you, would you have wanted to spend a week talking to this guy? And that's time you could have spent getting to know these other guys that probably would have worked out better. He's telling you up front, he doesn't want you. And it's like, this bitch got so in her feelings. And it's like, lady, that's half your problem. She's put it off a television. Now, though. this lady, spoiler alert right. for anyone that's going to watch uh, when I do this watch long thing. Spoiler alert. Plastic lady and uh, uh, her husband, who's just kind of a fucking like whatever. He kind of like, he's he's just a, a guy. He's like very like quiet, doesn't do much or anything. Fucking hot Asian bitch was about to fucking nab him up. And he just fucking like right at the moment of picking your partners. He's like, uh, uh. I pick my wife, marry me. And he just fucking, he just, he fucking cucks out. And he's like, I'm not going through this experiment. And he's like, I just, I, I want to be with my wife. And like, it's like, all right, yeah, great, nice moment, whatever. Then there's this other dude. There's this other dude, Nate, who's like this. He's like the epitome of, how would I describe him? Um, oh, yeah, there's the skeleton dude. Um, Jeff, that's the name. Uh, so he's like, I don't know, like soy boy isn't the right word. But he's like one of these newer guys that just tries to be like, yeah, I'm very like open and into the like blah, 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 blah. Where you're just like, ugh. Like talking to him, you'd be annoyed as a guy. And and he's like, he's like the guy that's like, that's real. Like, you know, I think I can speak for everyone here when I, and, and uh, he's just like the fucking corniest fucking white dude I've ever goddamn seen. And he's like, his problem is he wants kids and his chick is doesn't want kids, right? He's like the real like, like he met this hot bitch and he's like mm, doesn't want to give this up but at the same time he wants kids badly and i mean dude he he's like he's confident in his first choice and she gets taken off the board because basically you the way you room with the person for this thing you both have to pick each other so he's confident in his first choice and she ends up um going with someone else and and then this the next choice is like the uh <laughs> The next choice is like a chick that gives this long thing like, you know, like a really connected with Nate and blah, 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 blah. But I feel like I need this guy who's like really calm and everything that goes with him. And then they're like in break, right? For, for like, and, and you just see him, the blonde dude Nate sitting there and he's like, he's going to this one chick across the table who he like really did not interact with like at all. Like the entire week they're there. And he's like, he's like, I'm going to pick you next. And she's like, what? And he's like, I'm going to pick you. And then... <laughs> it's this one guy it's the dickheaded guy that was like sort of like told the chick hey i'm i'm not really feeling you it's his turn to go and he's going on this like thing where he's like you know i really connected with and he's talking about nate uh i think her name's lauren it's like nate girl the nate dude's chick and he's like you know i really connected with you. at one party start he goes he goes i mean i know maybe it's a little soon to use a word like love and stuff like that and the room's like oh and this nate dude has a fucking meltdown dude he fucking he gets up and he's like you know what and he he goes over to his chick and he proposes too but it's this really like weird tension in the room because you everyone can feel that this dude was just feeling like oh if my girl goes in rooms with this guy it's a wrap he's hmm. closing that deal on that and and so he's like marry me and she says yes and then the whole room's kind of confused and stuff and the dude's like uh, the, the the host and stuff. It's hosted by Nick Lachey, by the way. I I miss Nick Ugh. Nick and whatever her dumb yeah. face is Lachey. I don't know what her name is, but it's all based on their relationship, the show or something. It's like you know we took a break and then we came back and realized oh we 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 just want to be with each other, and dude, the so the salesman guy I think his name is Colby right. He's sitting there kind of dumbfounded that this just happened, and they're talking to him like so they're like Colby we know you were about to like pick Lauren and stuff like what's going through your mind? And he's like he's like I mean hey. I'm happy for you guys. And he's like, he says, he's, first of all, every guy in this show is a pussy. And this guy's like, you know, I hope I get to find that and experience what you're experiencing now for myself one day, which is like, oh, if I ever said some shit like that, shoot me on sight. And he's like, but I got to wonder. He's like, he's like, what like changed your mind right now? And Nate dude starts chiming in like he's real charged and heated. He's just like, I'm sorry. Are you saying there's a problem that I just proposed to the love of my life, uh, by the way? Uh, and fuck it. And he's just, dude, he's having like the most widest meltdown fucking ever. Oh, and, and, and the host finally jumps in. It's kind of like, he's like, um, they're like, I think what Colby's trying to ask is you came here, you being the one to issue the ultimatum that you want kids. And if your girl doesn't want kids, you don't want to be with her. So yes, this is the fucking show. Yes, and so they're basically yeah. That's that's the Colby dude, and then <laughs> did they get to the fucking dude? And they're basically the, the whole point. Relax. Is, they're basically like, why why all of a sudden are you willing to like kids having kids was a big fucking deal for you? No, 
Why are dogs here? Why are you all of a sudden? Yeah, he's like, well, you know, if, if he's like, if, if sacrificing, if I have to make the sacrifice of having kids to be with Lauren, like, then I, I, I get like, that's a sacrifice I'll make kind of thing. And they're all just kind of like, <laughs> they're all calling him on his bullshit, but, but no one will really like, just be like, I call bullshit on that. Except for the Asian lady. She starts having this meltdown. At first, you think she's going to make it all about her? Cause she kind of does that throughout the show. And she's like, she's like, you know, we came here and I'm watching my partner. It's like. It's she's like I'm hurt because I'm watching my partner it, like really vibing with this other chick, but like I'm committed to this process and letting it work and stuff. And he's like, he's like, you, I see in some of you people just fucking waste time for the last week and shit. And she just starts calling this dude out and stuff. And she's like, she's like, I didn't pick you, Nate, because I felt like you were staring at my tits the whole time. Huh. And, 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 nice. and, and <laughs> dude, just starts calling him out. And he just, he just, it, I've never seen a whiter meltdown. Anyone that wants to see the greatest white meltdown ever, it's like episode two of the ultimatum. It fucking, it's so funny. And I mean, it's, it's, they have cameras in their hotel rooms. So you see later on when this couple's talking, they think the camera isn't rolling and stuff. And, and she's like, well, you know, like we still have to resolve this issue. She's like, you know, I, and he's like, well, no, he's like, I, it's a, he's like, it's a kid's issue. He's like, we can get married, doesn't it? And she's like, right, but I'm not going to walk down the aisle if I can't promise you kids and that's what you want. And it's just like, you could basically just tell the dude made a huge insecure moment. It's like, hey, man. And by the way, a guy that was like not 10 minutes prior to this being like, you know, I came here and I just I really wanted to fully embrace this. Like he was all about trying to get some pussy. And the moment he realized he wasn't going to get any of his choices, he freaked the fuck out. And then he, he made an emotional panic proposal. And it's fucking hilarious. Guys, I'm going to be fucking giggling my tits off to the show and it's you're going to love it. Um I've having a, I've been having a guilty pleasure too, but I have it every year. Well, I pick it up every other year, maybe every year. 90 Day Fiance. Mm. Yeah, it's been fucking crazy. I think this one's before the 90 Days or some shit or um, some shit like that, but um dog, there's this guy named fucking Benjamin, bro. This is white dude, man. He's like in his fucking 50s. Hmm. This dude shows up all the way to Peru to meet up with a chick named Mahogany, who, like, bro, when they meet up, um, she doesn't even meet him at the airport, right? When he goes to Peru, when he flies there. Oh, he, I heard that she makes him, like, take a bus and a bunch of buses, and he just kind of shows up. No, he just flies to Peru. No, no, no. He just flies to Peru, right? And, and he meets up with her, and, like, he tries to meet up with her. But that first night, she, st she stood him up. She 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 stood him up and got no text, no nothing. Uh the next uh the next day he's like, I'm gonna meet you at a um such and such place in the city at this restaurant at, at this time. She show she actually showed up, showed up like an hour and a half late, like thirty minutes before the fucking restaurant closed or some shit, right? She shows up. She's like, Yeah, it's me, whatever. She's not how she looks like in the pictures. I mean, she's still beautiful, but she's not like, you know. She has like a neck, you know, a little fat on her neck, you know what I'm saying? She obviously um, photoshopped her pictures and shit like that, right? Fair. And the next day, they, 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 they hook up and they meet, right? And she's like, oh, this is my place. It's obviously an Airbnb. She was lying straight up to the dude and was like, yo, this is my place. And he didn't even buy it. He was like, this is weird. Is there like no, was there pictures up? In the house? Yes. And there was even a surfboard on the, on the wall. And it threw him off. He's like, why is a surfboard? He, yo, he was asking all the right questions. And she was just dodging it. There was a guest room with a bunk with a, uh, there was a guest room with a, with a bunk bed in it. And he was like, why is there a guest room with a, uh, with a bunk bed in it? And she was like, you know, in case my friends stay over. He was like, oh, okay. A guest room. He wasn't buying it at all. And then he met with the parents. The Bitches parents are so dumb, dude. He met with the parents. The parents was like, "Yo, you're like 52. You could be her dad." He's like, "I know, but you know, she's she yeah, you know, she acts grown for her age." Mom Duke's like, "Yeah, she acts grown for a 22 year old." He's like, "22? I thought she was 24." <laughs> like that too <two> <laughs> makes a difference. He's like, "My daughter's 22. I can't date this bitch." Like, <laughs> oh, and but then, two years old back today. <laughs> yeah, I think his oldest is 22. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. And then uh, that's like you remember Brandon Valley, friend of the show, Brandon Valley. Like I, I want to think he's. Uh, he told me that his mom's boyfriend is his age. So he's like, yeah, he's like, we get along. Like we'll watch the same shit. That's whack. <laughs> that's so wild. Um, 
fuck around a couple of days later i guess in this trip in peru you know they like hand it off and then she, and then he's like and then he brings it up to her he's like yo i want to talk about what happened stuff just seems weird you told me about your age it wasn't right when i swear that i can um i wish you a happy birthday on your 24th birthday like you know like i don't know what's going on that place that you had me at and then she just walked up and left she's like all right fine whatever you don't believe me fine i don't trust you neither asking me questions and stuff you're an old man showing up to peru and it's, it's like bitch you've been talking to this dude for months what are you talking about yeah, like, what she's weird she was super weird and then there's another What's dude. What's the name of the show again? 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day. Gotcha, gotcha. And then there's another, like, there's another, like, fucking dude. It's like in his 50s, goes to Colombia, gets bitched out by a Latina, because, you know, they have, they're all fucking fire and ice and fury. And it's like, bro, stand up to that bitch, you cornball. Like, all kind of cornballs on that show. It's a crazy show. But that and Tokyo Vice. I've been watching that on Netflix, too. I like that. That's pretty cool. How is that? Because I've, I've only no, seen... No, that's not on Netflix. That's on HBO Max. I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't actually watched even a trailer for that, but I've just, I keep seeing the <laughs> poster for it or mm-hmm. billboard for it. It looks cool. Is it, what is it, like a cyberpunk Miami Vice? No, it's based in the 90s, <laughs> 2000s. Shh. Based in the 90s, early 2000s. Um, it's about a guy from... <laughs> The Midwest, I believe, and uh, no, from St. Louis, and he ends up in um, Tokyo, one on the right for one of the biggest newspapers, and um, Vice. So you know, you know what Vice means, right? Vice means drugs, narcotics, the whole thing, prostitution. That's the that's the um, that's the unit, whatever, in like a police department or whatever, right? Yep. So he's the he writes for the newspapers like Vice Department, you know gotcha, what I'm saying? Yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. like on the beat police stuff, you know what I'm saying? And he just starts getting involved with the scene and the scene is pretty much like neon lights and the whole neo tokyo vibe gotcha. but it's the early 2000s so you get the whole vibe of the 2000s <laughs> and you know flip phones and block, <laughs> little block cell phones and shit like that nokia's and shit it's nothing nothing like with a mix of both future and past nice all past shit you know what i'm saying nice. music's from back then all that shit That's it's pretty fire. cool pretty cool but um yeah um the nba season right is over um, I sent you a link. I wanted to show you what's up. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see how your. Let's see how my team finish. How your team finish. I think oh, it's God, this don't one. Don't we gonna rub in my fucking face? I think it's this one. Go ahead. Can I tell you how annoying it is? By the way, that like the Knicks are playing really good towards the end of the season, but at the same time, yeah, nobody cares. Um, oh, God damn it! Wait, am I gonna be able to bring this up? I can manage this. I can manage this. You know why? Because I'm a fucking god. Oh, and then we went black. All right. You know what? It's going to be too above my pay grade. We're going to bring it up, but I'm not going to put it on screen. Um, let's see. Yeah, your team finished second. Great. Yeah, but that's not the important part. The part <laughs> I pulled up, this, this, uh, the, the standings is because your team finished like fucking 15th or some shit. No, not even. Um, no, we're one, we're one below the play-in line. For what? So you're 12th? Uh, it'd be 11th, wouldn't it? Nah, 11th is a nine, play-in spot. Oh, it is? Oh, then yeah, we're probably... Seven, eight, nine, and Bro, ten. That's no, you're like right. You're eleventh. Ball sack. Yeah, you're eleventh. You're one below the Hornets, but you finished thirty-seven and forty-five. Hornets finished forty-three and thirty-nine. You were nowhere near that that spot at all. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I seen that Trey Young finished with a. We had a lot double. of injuries that we can't. That's a, this is our problem. I mean, not I, among the myriad of fucking problem of the Knicks is like, anytime we start getting momentum, Mitch Robinson gets injured or fucking. Like, someone's always been fucking injured all season long. We need, like, I like RJ's killing it, quickly's killing it, Topin's killing it, uh, killing it. I'm not, I, I'm not re- really willing to give up on Randall just yet. Uh, okay. I like Mitch Robinson, but I just, that, that's my, Mitch is my biggest problem right now because he's an amazing player. He just doesn't stay fucking healthy. Um, like his stats are great. He's doing nice double doubles. He could be a little more offensive. You know what I mean? He could be a lot, a little more like. Yeah, uh, he, he could. He could definitely. He was working on a three pointer over the summer. He just I didn't see it. But step out, take a jumper. killing it. Obi's fucking cool. Oh, since he's been starting, right? I heard he's been killing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they were, I think they're resting Randall right now, and then RJ had like a, a little bit of a knee like tweak. So they're just like, you know, it's end of the season. Why we're not gonna risk an injury for nothing? So, but dude, like they they. Did you see the last game? I mean, this is the thing. They played the Raptors the last game. The Raptors are already in it. The Raptors aren't gonna be playing their hardest. I get it. So it's not like I'm like, wow. 
But fucking Obi had like 42 points in a triple double and quickly had like 34 points in a triple double. It was nuts. That's my only problem with, with Tom Thibodeau, really, is it's like, just play the young guys, man. They're fucking playing great. Even if, like, if we're going to be losing, I'd rather be losing and we're getting experience from it. Like, I like Alec Burks, but why are we starting Alec Burks over quickly? Suck my dick. You still giving Taj Gibson minutes? Yes, that's what's crazy to me, too. If he's there's gonna, injuries, sure. He's going to go to the great we, with Taj we, Gibson next year. We, we didn't have Derrick Rose all season. He was actually really pivotal to our, our bench last year. That was a big loss. Not having Derrick Rose really has fucked Talk us up this season. It. Talk about tanking. The Pacers <laughs> finished their last 10 games 0-10. They deserve the one seed. Uh, the, uh, the one pick. They deserve it. Um, Who do you think's taking it? I was gonna. I was just about to ask you that. Yeah, the Blazers finished the last ten on ten too. Like the, the Heat are in first in the for the East, pick. but I, I just I don't see them beating out everyone. The thing with the Heat <laughs> is that they have a lot of good role players, and yeah. their players helped out during the season. And it's like when you get their healthy players all back, like how those when you get down to a small rotation to like of six, seven, eight players, <laughs> how like who's which of those role players are the ones that you're gonna play? Because the Heat are a twelve, a twelve man, eleven man <laughs> team, like you know, yeah. like that coach likes going to the bench a lot. So you have to. Which, figure to be out. honest, I kind of like. That's that's like a style of play I really enjoy. Like I hate, I hate just relying on like eight guys outside of playoffs. It's not going to work in the first round. Well, cause like, right, like who, it'll work if they make it out the first round, they Nets the, the second, or, or they exactly. They, could, they might end up playing the Nets. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to work in the first round. <laughs> and and it, this is the thing too: is it's like. I don't think it will. Getting first place. You got to play a big guy. You got to play the guys that. Like, look, you got to play your superstars <laughs> long minutes. All respect to the Heat. Tyler Hero has to get 40 minutes a game. <laughs> all, all respect to the Heat. Even though you can't I, play I defense worth a shit. I didn't think the Heat would recover from a post LeBron era so quickly to be relevant again, so I'll give him credit. The Cavs, too. Cavs, too. Uh, but but if we're yeah, if we're being real here, it's like. I, I just. Jimmy Butler's been on great teams and still hasn't turned the needle over. It's like. Maybe because this is really like his team now, and him and Bam, and he really is locked in. But it's Bam's just, team, <laughs> like, it means nothing to get first place in the, in this. Like the the little bullshit trophy you're gonna get for coming first in the Eastern Conference. Who gives a fuck? It means nothing. It's all about the championship, and I I agree with you. I just don't think, you you know, when when the when it's on the line, I don't see Kyrie and KD dropping the ball up against these people i don't see Giannis not fucking just yamming the fuck out of that team so who do you think is gonna make it because i know i, I like i have my <laughs> how confident are you in your celtics this year very I'm, confident right i'm not i'm not like extremely confident because we don't have uh one of the uh, main stays in how the did defense. they do against the heat this year I, I uh fantastic I um but the thing is rob williams is hurt and he's our starting center and it's like I, and I I kind of think I agree with you. I feel like I think the Celtics can beat them, mainly for the reason that like dog we beat the Heat like two at least two times this season, and we're a fucking garbage team. Now whether they had all their starting players during those games, I don't know, but they they had at least most of them. Close um, game, close game. No, no. Um. So like, as far as as far as um. The Celtics defense, and as far as their starting five, we have the best starting five in the NBA statistically. Who's your starting five. It was Rob Williams, Al Horford, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Mm. Um, so see that team's so good, but I just I still feel like they need like one. Nah, we had no, we're not. We we're good. Uh, so the Heat won in March. We won November and in January. One one twenty two to ninety two ninety five seventy. And the one you lost is a close game. It's a less than ten point game. Oh no, we actually lost. Wait wait wait, lost one one. Wait, cause we just lost a recent game. I said it right there. One hundred six ninety eight. Yeah, that's that one that you. One hundred six ninety eight. Yeah, so we beat them. You beat them twice. And they twice. Beat they once. beat us once. And the one they beat you by was like eight points. That's a yes. that's a winnable playoff game. Celtics won two. Celtics won one. Heat won one. Yeah. Dog. Um, what are we doing here? Head I mean, to head all time too. Seventy eight fifty one. Dog. To I'm telling you this right now. The 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 Heat ain't beating the Celtics or the 76ers. 
That 76ers team is gross now. James Harden and Embiid. Uh, and James Harden hasn't even been hot as far as a shot. He's just been doing everything else good. Yeah, he's been doing everything else really good. Playing defense. Defense. Passing assists, the ball. Like crazy. He's like Rebounding. a fucking. He's a nasty. He's nasty, dude. It's fucking. Um, um I I know that we we get the winner of um not the net series. We get the winner of the Hornets and Hawks, I believe. Hmm. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm not really too stressed. Uh, Hornets and... Looks like in theory you'd play the Cavs, right? Mm-hmm. We don't... I don't think we play... I don't think we play the Nets in that second round. I don't believe or so. Or no, you'd play the... See, it's like the fucking the play-in shit makes it all dumb and confusing. Yeah. I hate the playing thing. I just fucking pick the top eight teams. Celtics and Suns in the finals. Fuck that. Oh, fuck. I can see that. I can see that. I don't know if you guys push it over the edge, but I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, I love you too, Nucky. Go ahead. I'm trying to load these clips and stuff, but the fucking your goddamn internet slash my <laughs> mobile connection is just not good. Try mine. It's it's going to fuck it up if I do it mid-show now. Okay. All right, we're, just, we're rolling with it, babe. Um, so that link was a link of the uh recent aliens that uh were captured on camera, and um, it's pretty interesting, dog. Like, I've been keeping up. You know, sometimes I come back and I talk about aliens on the show and shit. So I figure well, out the government the said block. they're real. So, yeah, their words, not mine. Um, so as far as recent UFO, there it is. Just look at this shit. It's just it's so jittery looking. It's hard like the the, or the it's, it's so pixelated looking that once it zooms out, it's like hard to tell. This shit's getting views though. It's shit's like I think it was like at ten thousand last time I checked. Yeah, ten thousand right there. Right, and then this is the object slowed down. Yeah, People that, have that been trying to break this shit down the last twenty four hours like like a motherfucker. It doesn't look real though. Okay. UFO, right? Alien, right? Doesn't look real, right? Doesn't look like from this planet, right? I'm just it looks like a really badly rendered object. Like it, it like I'm saying it could just be like a special effect. I don't Okay, hold on. I got another one for you. Um It's funny cuz it almost looks like a helmet or like a face. There's one where somebody broke down What's inside of it? It could <laughs> be inside of it. And like, it's all kind of shit. Like, what the fuck is that flowing around there, huh? A little alien dude, huh? <coughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? Huh? You little alien guy flowing around in there? What's I going on, know. buddy? Okay, but if that's a ship, how does it land? Because it's all cockeyed looking. Okay. It, it, that's not the point. Like, it's like, it's not from this world. That's like, you got to understand. Jeez, Louise. You got to believe. Oh my God! Ryan Graves confirms that the gimbal and go fast videos are from the same mission. Hmm. Interesting. That's the military uh, footage. Oh, from good. It. And now my battery on my computer is dying. Okay. We should just, like, you know, we did a good like 30, 40 minutes. We should just should put a red ribbon bow on it there. That's some good ones, but we'll save it for we'll next save time, these because these these are good clips. I don't want to like waste them. So we'll say we'll do another one. We'll do another one this week. Okay. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say we'll do that. And we'll put a real effort in to try. What do you got to plug, buddy? Nothing. Just the website, overtimeoften.com. I ain't, man, I'm pissed. You're pissed? I'm sad. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm sad. It's how we couldn't go longer, man. Only because, you know. Yeah, guys, follow me on It's Irish O'Neal. Uh, too much content. Live. I'm going to go for a jog. I'm pissed off. I'm going to go for a three-mile jog. Check out the, the candles and stuff at Ani Moosh Media and stuff. Did you bring the, those, by the way? Uh, I think Ani has some, but I didn't bring them with me because I'm retarded. But I'll, I'll see if we have time tomorrow to swing by or some bullshit. I don't know. Um, anyway, so stay wet, cunts. Peace. Peace.